Are we Capcom? Station, this is the University of Houston downtown. How do you hear me? <laughs> University of Houston downtown, welcome to the International Space Station. I hear you loud and clear. Up on me. Hello, I hear you, Lima Mike. Hey, Juan, I hear you the same. It's good to hear your voice. Good to see you, brother. You look taller. <laughs> yeah, it's the wonders of being in space, but it all change when I get back home. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Well, I'm going to turn it over now to our faculty member, Franklin Allaire, and uh, to conduct the rest of this program. Again, thank you so much for being part of the University of Houston downtown, and uh, we'll talk when you get back. And tonight is here. Good morning, Astronaut Akaba. How are you today? I'm doing wonderful, sir. How are you? I'm doing great. We've got a whole bunch of students that are really excited to get started uh, with uh, their amazing questions, and I hope you are too. Shall we just go ahead and get rolling? I'm ready to rock and roll. All right, so let's do it. So first up is Lauren Wilkie. Hi, Joe. I'm Lauren Wilkie. Thank you so much for joining us today. For our stim on station. Hello, it's my pleasure. <laughs> for our stim on station experiment, my partners and I created and ran experiments looking at the effect of different chemicals on the surface tension of water. So my question is, do chemicals like soap or salt impact the surface tension of liquids the same way in microgravity as they do on Earth? Well, that's a, that's a great question and a pretty cool experiment to, to be done up here. And actually on my last expedition, I was up here with uh, Don Pettit, uh, an astronaut, and he did all kinds of experiments on his uh, own time. And one of those was exactly that, dealing with the surface tension of water and how it might change when you have things like soap. And it behaves very similar to how it does on Earth, where the surface tension of the water it does decrease with the, uh, the addition of uh, different chemicals like the soap. So, good question. Thank you so much. Next, we have Nellie Olvera. <coughs> Hi, Joe. My question for you is, how did your family react when you told them that you got accepted to the astronaut program? Well, that was a long time ago, but I think they were probably as shocked as I was. Um, so they probably didn't believe me when I first told them. Just like uh, a lot of my friends, if you were to talk to Dr. Munoz there, um, and folks they knew me beforehand, I think they were all shocked to, to see that I got accepted. So it was uh, a great time in my life, a wonderful experience, and I was just so happy to share it with my family and friends. Thank you for sharing. Next, we have Melvin Rivas. Hello, Joe. Melvin Rivas here. Hope you're doing well. I'm a future candidate myself. And I have the following question for you. Uh, your mission on board the space station will be ending in a couple of weeks. Um, how does it feel returning to Earth after being in space? And how, we, um, how long does it take to readjust when you get back to Earth? Hey there. Um, it's a... Uh... It's very interesting when you get back. It's amazing on how your body forgets what gravity feels like. Even on my shuttle flight, only being gone for about 13 days, when we re-entered um, and got back, re-entered the atmosphere, got back to Earth, it was amazing how heavy my head felt, <laughs> books that we had to hold on to, just your arms, everything felt super, super heavy. Um, so gravity is real, it, it does work, and it's quite <laughs> And it takes, 
you know, depending on what you mean, how long it takes to recover. For me, in the first 24 hours, I feel terrible. Um, as my equilibrium is kind of getting readjusted. Uh, but within a week, I was feeling great, able to drive a, a car. So again, the body is amazing on how we can adapt to a different environment so quickly. Okay, thank you for sharing that information.